A very good evening friends. I welcome you all to the Daily Hindu Newspaper Analysis brought to you by the Shankar IAS Academy. Today's date is 29th January. Today we are going to discuss articles which appear in the yesterday's and today's newspaper. Here are the list of articles which we are going to discuss today. In this, we are having 4 articles which are related to our preliminary preparation and one main spacer article. Okay, now let us get into discussion. This science page article from yesterday's newspaper talks about how a non-invasive species can lead to ecosystem shifts and changes. Here, the article quotes the example of mutualism between native ants and acacia trees in Kenya. While the native ants protect the tree from grazers by building their colony, in exchange, the trees provide the ants a place to live. Imagine what happens if the native ants are not present. The trees would become vulnerable to overgrazing by elephants, leading to a more open landscape. This not only affects the trees, but also leaves no hiding places for the lion while they strike for their prey. See, this is how a non-invasive species can lead to ecosystem shifts. This is the crux of the article. In this context, let us quickly understand about an important prelims oriented concept which you would have witnessed in your test series and previous equations. That is, symbiotic relationship between various organisms. See, firstly know that mutualism, commensalism and parasitism are the three types of behaviors seen in symbiotic interactions. Apart from this, there are other popular interactions like competition, predation and amensalism. Now let us see them one by one. See the example that we saw in the intro part that is talking about mutualism. See, mutualism can be precisely defined as an interaction between various species or individuals that results in positive or beneficial effects on the interacting population. Here note that both the species benefit from mutualism. The most common example is the partnership between nitrogen fixing bacteria and leguminous plants. A closely related but different concept is competition. Don't confuse the competition with mutualism. Here in this competitive association both the species lose. Have a look at the table. Here plus symbolizes gain and minus means loss. Okay now similarly in both parasitism and predation only one species benefits that is parasite and predator respectively. This interaction is detrimental to the other species which is host and prey respectively. Okay. Classic examples for parasitism includes interaction between the vertebrate hosts and tapeworms, flukes, malaria causing plasmodium species and fleas. The interaction where one species is benefited and the other is neither benefited nor harmed is called commensalism. For example, hermit crabs use gastropod shells to protect their bodies. In amensalism on the other hand, one species is harmed whereas other one is got unaffected. Here importantly note that predation, parasitism and commensalism share a common characteristics that is the interacting species live closely together whereas mutualism does not require that. Okay, that's all regarding this discussion. In this discussion, we saw various examples of symbiotic relationship between various organisms. So with this learned points, let us conclude this and take up the next news article for our analysis. Look at this news article. This news article talks about bringing reforms in the Special Economic Zone or SEZ. See, this will allow the SEZ to aid in the movement of goods between Domestic Tariff Area or TTAs. See, this is the crux of the article. So, in this discussion, let us understand about SEZ from a preliminary perspective. A Special Economic Zone or SEZ is a geographical region that is designed to generate positive economic growth in the country. This particular region has more liberal economic laws vis-a-vis -vis other areas. In other words, SEZ has more favorable economic regulations compared to other regions in the same country or states. For example, the government provides tax incentives or opportunity to pay lower tariffs in such areas. Now coming to objectives. The main objective of SEZ includes the generation of additional economic activity, promotion of exports of goods and services, promotion of investment from domestic sources and creation of employment opportunities along with the development of infrastructural facilities. Apart from all these, SEZ also promote foreign direct investment or FDI in the country. Now with these basics, let us understand the types of SEZ in the economy. There are many types of SEZ in the economy. Now let us see the important types of SEZ. They are free trade zone, export processing zone, industrial parks and specialized zones. Now, first let us take free trade zones. See, these zones are also called as commercial free or foreign trade zones. These foreign trade zones are specially secured areas where they have special customs procedures and duty free treatment. 
they are also generally designated for the processing of imported or exported goods now coming to export processing zone see these are generally used for commercial and industrial exports the main goal of creating epz is to increase the economic growth through foreign investment in the processing sector see epz offers certain benefits such as tax and import duty exceptions now coming to industrial parks see the industrial parks are designed to be used for industrial purposes rather than commercial or residential purposes these areas offer certain tax related incentives for people who intend to use the industrial parks finally let's talk about specialized zones see the specialized zones are used to develop technology hubs airport based zones and logistics parks all these will help in faster processing and faster exports of the goods see this is all regarding the discussion in this discussion firstly we saw about uh, scz and the various objective of it and in the second part we saw about the various types of scz in the country with this learned points let us conclude this and take up the next news article for our analysis look at this news article biplak kumar dev a rajya sabha member and a former tripura chief minister request assistance from the tamil nadu government for the effective implementation of pradhan mantri vishwakarma scheme see this is the crux of the article in our discussion we will discuss about pm vishwakarma scheme let us start with the objective see the pm vishwakarma scheme aims to provide economic support to the traditional craft person and artisans the scheme aims to provide economic support by providing them affordable credit through the scheme it aims to improve their economic viability now let us see the important provisions of the scheme see the scheme offers loans up to 3 lakh in true tranches to eligible individuals the eligible individuals include people who are practicing 18 trades like cobblers toy makers laundry men barbers masons and coin weavers see this loans comes with a concessional interest rate of 5% to make sure this is implemented without any constraints the scheme has a budgetary outlay of 13000 crores see the government aims to cover 5 lakh families in the first year of implementation over a span of 5 years the scheme is expected to reach 30 lakh families see the scheme also has a component for skill enhancement the scheme includes skilling programs that offer a nominal stipend it also provides financial assistance to help artisans purchase modern tools aiming to enhance their skills and capabilities see these are the important provisions of the scheme now what are the advantages of the scheme the first main advantage is access to credit see currently traditional artisans face the challenge of uh, access to formal credit the scheme addresses this issue by providing them affordable loans by accessing these loans the artisans can make investments in their trade and improve their livelihoods the second main advantage is affordable credit see the scheme provides credit at concessional interest rate of 5% this makes the loan more affordable for the artisans this in turn will help them avoid the burden of high interest debt from informal money lenders the next advantage is skill development as i mentioned that the scheme has a provision of skill development this provision will enhance the artisan skill and enable them to produce higher quality goods and adapt to changing market demands the last advantage is that the scheme will help the artisans to increase the market for their goods by offering financial assistance to purchase modern tools the scheme can help the artisans to tap in new markets this in turn will broaden their customer base for their products and services these are all some of the important advantages of the scheme so in essence pm vishwakarma scheme has the potential to provide crucial financial assistance and skill development to traditional artisans but the scheme success in creating actual positive impact depends on addressing the deeper challenges beyond the credit availability like increasing the market access valuation and economic viability see this is all regarding this discussion in this discussion we saw about the futures of pradhan mantri vishwakarma scheme and in the second part we saw about the various advantages of this scheme so this learned points let us come to this discussion and take up the next news article for our analysis look at this news article on january 1 the rural development ministry mandated the use of aadhar based payment system in the mg narega scheme despite workers protest and multiple deadline extensions the union government implemented this abps that is aadhar based payment system now that mg narega has two wage payment modes one is account based and other one is abps based here account based transfers use the worker's name bank account number and ifsc code whereas 
ABPS requests linking of Aadhaar to the job card and bank accounts. To use ABPS, workers must authenticate their job card details with the Aadhaar database. Know that Aadhaar must also be linked to the workers bank account. See, if any of these steps is incorrect, workers may be denied their work or they may face wage delays or not receiving any payments in their preferred account. See, fixing of ABPS glitches requires workers to spend money and lose several days of their livelihood. So, the article explores the challenges in implementing this move by central government. See, this is all the crux of the news article. In our discussion, we understand the digitalization process in India through our mains answer writing approach. Before entering our discussion, let us take a look at the syllabus. In mains, it comes under GS paper 2 under the topic of government policies and interventions for development in various sectors and issues arising out of their design and implementation. Okay, now look at the question. Unequal access to digitization creates and reproduces inequality. So, in the light of the above statement, discuss about the governmental steps for digitization and explain its shortcomings. See, it's a straightforward question. We have to mention the various schemes taken by government regarding the digitization. Then, we have to list out the few challenges in the digitization process. And in conclusion, we can suggest some steps to be taken to improve the digitization in India. See, this is how we are going to approach this question. Now, let us start with the introduction. Digitalization means the increased use of digital technologies to transform traditional economic activities, process, enhancing their efficiency, productivity and the overall growth. In this regard, Government of India has launched a Digital India program which aims to facilitate the delivery of the government services through digital means and also to promote digital literacy. See, this can be valid in proof for your question. Now, moving on to the body part of the answer, we are going to divide the body part into two parts. In the first part, we are going to explain the steps for digitalization in India. In the second part, we are going to explore the problems in the digitalization process. Firstly, let us see the schemes of digitalization in Indian economy. Firstly, Digital India campaign. See, this has empowered citizens through digital technologies. For example, DigiLocker has simplified the document access and sharing, contributing to the greater digital inclusion. It has over 15 crore registered users and 60 million monthly active engagements. See, access to this information is crucial for making informed decisions that can lead to socio-economic upliftment. Secondly, Aadhaar system. See, it's the world's largest biometric ID platform with over 1.3 billion enrollments. See, Aadhaar also helps to provide services like DBT, etc. This can contribute to reducing economic inequality by providing avenues for savings, investments and access to credit. Thirdly, Unified Payment Interface. See, UPA has revolutionized the digital payments in India, enabling seamless and real-time monetary transfers. The historic milestone of 10 billion monthly transactions in August 2023 emphasized the widespread adoption of digital payment solutions in India. Fourthly, Skill Development and Employment Opportunities. See, the digital literacy and skill development programs under Digital India can empower people with the necessary skills for digital economy. This in turn can create employment opportunities and reduce the gap between those who have access to technology and those who do not have. So, thereby it reduces the digital divide. Fifthly, telemedicine and healthcare services. See, Digital India program includes initiatives to improve the healthcare services through telemedicine and other online health platforms. See, this can be particularly beneficial for individuals in remote areas who have limited access to healthcare facilities. Improved healthcare accessibility can contribute to the reducing of health-related inequalities. Lastly, Smart City Mission. See, this mission envisions the development of 100 cities with advanced digital solutions. For example, Pune's Smart City project focuses on enhancing the urban mobility and solid waste management system. See, this will improve the quality of life in urban areas. These developments imply India's commitment to digital transformation and it has the positive impact of digitalization on various sectors. See, this can be a first part of the body part. Now, moving forward, we can see the challenges in the digital transformation. Firstly, digital divide. See, there is still a big gap between rural and urban side when it comes to digital infrastructure and access. See, only 50% of population has internet subscription, indicating that a substantial portion of population still lack access to digital economy. Currently, over 55,000 villages deprived of mobile connectivity. Secondly, cyber security issues. See, the increased reliance on 
digital platforms has elevated the risk of cyber attacks. In 2020, India faced the second highest number of cyber attacks in the Asia Pacific region. Thirdly, regulatory challenges. See, recent issues with Twitter and Indian government over various regulatory complaints shows the lack of proper regulatory mechanisms in dealing with the digital platforms. Fourthly, with respect to infrastructure challenges. See, poor digital infrastructure including slow internet speeds and inconsistent connectivity in various parts affects the full potential of using digitalization process. See, these are all some of the problems faced in the digitalization of Indian economy. Now, we have effectively addressed the body part of the answer. Now, let us go to the conclusion part. Here, we are going to suggest some steps to improve the digitalization process. Firstly, government should increase the investment in India's digital infrastructure. Secondly, there should be an active collaboration between government, private sector and academia in promoting the digital services. In addition to this, the government first create policies to address the issues like data privacy and other security issues. And finally, steps to be taken to boost the digital literacy, especially in rural areas. This can be achieved by creating some awareness campaigns. See, in summary, India's digital transformation has majorly contributed to its economic growth. We must address digital illiteracy, infrastructure and data privacy to ensure the complete digitalization of Indian economy and Indian society. See, this is all regarding the discussion. In this discussion, we saw about the potentialities and the schemes of digitalization process. And in the second part, we saw about the various challenges which are impinging the digitalization process of India. See, with this learned outcomes, we shall conclude this topic and take up the next news article for our analysis. Look at this news article. This news article talks about the potential electoral impact of issues related to the implementation of Forest Rights Act 2006. See, technically this act is called Scheduled Tribes and Other Traditional Forest Dwellers Recognition of Forest Rights Act 2006. See, this is the crux of the article. In this discussion, let's talk about the Forest Rights Act in prelims perspective. See, this particular act recognizes the rights of forest dwelling tribal communities and other traditional forest dwellers to forest resources. Because, as we know that, these communities depend on forest resources for variety of needs like livelihood, habitation and other socio-cultural needs. In addition to this, the Act also grants several other rights to ensure their control over the forest resources. And these include right to ownership, access to collect and use and dispose of minor forest produce and community rights. It also provides for the diversion of forest land for public utility facilities like schools, fair price shops, etc. that are being managed by the government. Thirdly, note that the Act instructs upon the Gram Sabha and right holders the responsibility of conserving and protecting the biodiversity of forest, wildlife and surrounding environment. Moreover, they are given responsibility to stop any destructive practices that affects the resources or cultural or natural heritage of the tribals. Now, on talking about the people who have got the right to claim these rights. See, all those members or community of the scheduled tribes who primarily reside here and who depend upon the forests or forest land for genuine livelihood needs are being eligible for the rights. And in addition to this, the rights can also be claimed by any community or members who had resided in the forest land mainly for genuine livelihood reason for at least three generations that is 75 years prior to the 13th day of December 2005. This is the cutoff date for this act. Okay, now coming on to the benefits associated with the implementation of this act. As we have discussed during the past few years, there were growing cases of uh, tribals being evicted from the forest land in parts of Kashmir Valley and Jammu region, since the government has termed them the illegal encroachers. See, despite tribal people having close ties with the forest, sadly there was no legal framework to recognize this. And on that line, this movie is expected to address the prolonged suffering of tribal people and to ensure their forest conservation. And more importantly, the implementation upholds the basic spirit of social equality and harmony which is being guided by the constitution. See, this is all regarding the discussion. In this discussion, we saw about the Forest Rights Act from Prince perspective. This is all regarding the discussion. Now, let us move on to the next part of our video that is to discuss the preliminary practice questions. Today, I am having four questions. I will solve three of them and one will be the quiz question for you to solve. Okay. Now, let us see the first question. Which of the following species that can establish symbiotic relationship with other organisms? See, there are four species are given. We have to check whether they can form symbiotic relationship. First one, Nidarians. See, this is correct because Nidarians are radially symmetrical soft boiled animals found in aquatic habitats. So, they can also form. Second one, Fungi, Protozoa, Crustaceans. See, 
we know that fungi are known for forming various symbiotic relationship with both plants and lichen formation so fungi are correct statement 3 protozoa are also correct for see the statement 4 crustaceans see they are also can establish symbiotic relationship for example certain species of cleaner shrimp engage in mutual like relationship with larger organism by cleaning the parasites and debris from their host see all the four statements given here can form symbiotic relationship so the correct option is option c see the second question scz are set up under scz act 2005 as a duty free enclave in india which of the following statements about scz is not correct here we have to find which is not correct see the four statements first one it shall be deemed to be a foreign territory for the purpose of trade operations and duties and tariffs in india see statement one is correct as we have seen in our discussion see the second statements goods and services are treated as imports into india see this is correct because goods and services which are going into scz area shall be treated as an exports and goods coming from scz shall be treated as imports so second statement is obviously correct see the third one exempted from sales tax and other levies which are extended by the respective state governments see this is also correct as we can easily say that scz or adias which are often given various exceptions from tax benefits see the final statement 100% income tax exceptions on in- export income under section 10a of the it act for lifetime operations see this look fishy right because we know that 100% of the profit is entitled to tax deduction for the first 5 consecutive years then 50% export profit is being entitled to deduction for the next 5 years so the here lifelong operations is not correct so the correct option is option d see the third question of the day how many of the trades mentioned below are covered under pm vishwakarma scheme see locksmith goldsmith potter sculptor stone breaker and barber see all the six trades which are given here will fall under pm vishwakarma scheme so the correct option is option d see the quiz question of the day is being given here interested aspirants please uh, answer it in the comment section and i will post it also in the community section so you can go and answer there also see if you like today's video like comment and share it with your friends for more updates regarding upsc preparation subscribe to shankar ias academy thank you